The Working Lunch on WCUW 91.3 FM, and it's heard every <coughs> fourth Wednesday of the month, because some months have five Wednesdays. That's correct. So it's not the last West Wednesday necessarily. It's the fourth. Yeah, mm. it makes it harder to say. It doesn't really flow off the tongue as easily. Mm. Yeah. Well, what are you going to do? Well, we're making do. We're, it's the sacrifices we make for our for our work here. It's all about understanding. <laughs> so uh, let's go. Uh, you know, I'm a little disappointed, though, that we haven't been able to come up with some sort of like mailbag. Bing, bing. That works. Speedy delivery. We something like that. that, you know, just mm. something to designate that this yeah. we're moving into the mail bag section of the show all right <laughs> very good <laughs> moving into that section sean there take it go. away yeah so we've got a uh, a question here from lois in cohog rhode island wait wait, said, wait 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 where was that cohog rhode island i think quahog and what's the name lois i'm thinking you've been had sir i uh, hopefully this is a real uh, you've pre-screened the question obviously mm-hmm. yeah it's a good question but I mean, i'm I think thinking lois and cohog that to me cohog rhode island right yeah yeah, that's. I think that's a character, uh, a fictitious character from, uh, from Family Guy, the Family show, Guy. the TV oh, yeah, show. Okay. There's a TV show on television called The Family Guy. Somebody's getting funny with us, but it's a good question, so we could get, we could move along with it. Well, Lois, if that's your real name, <laughs> it's funny too because she talks about her teenage son in the question. So. Oh, and in the show they have a teenage. Yeah, son? Chris is the. But anyway. Oh, Jace, huh? That's my Peter Griffin impersonation. <laughs> so go ahead. Uh, so Lois writes, I need to have my teenage son busy this summer and not just sitting around the house playing video games. Can you offer some advice on how to get him a summer job? So that I think actually this is, is a very timely and relevant right. question. I've heard a lot so. of people talking about this. And like you well, said. Well, we get these calls all the time. Not necessarily from Lois. Right. But and especially we just had the, uh, the job fair, the summer job fair with, with Worcester State University. That's right. It had, over, uh, had a few hundred young people go. We had... Uh, uh, I think over 40 um, companies yeah, and organizations, who including jobs, summer jobs, yeah, yeah including uh, many with, with summer jobs. So so what's what, so what do we want to tell uh, Lois from Cohog? Yeah, I, I spoke with some of the people upstairs, and they were saying that one of the things you can do is when you, when you use a job search board, mm-hmm. you can type in the keyword seasonal or summer, and that'll help kind of... Um, narrow some of that down. Yeah, Temporary is another... Down. Um, now, just to just to mention too, there's some great job boards out there, but one of them uh, that's really been uh, revamped and and augmented and and kind of vastly improved is the Mass Job Quest mm-hmm. uh, system. So that's the state's workforce system. It's actually uh, we've partnered up with the conference board, who has uh, over 50 years' experience in culling uh, want ad information job want uh, help wanted information so it's a service called help wanted online that we've brought into the fold with mass job quest and uh, so that any given time right now there's uh, approximately over 80,000 job vacancies listed on mass job quest and that's searchable they can it's searchable by different keywords and different uh, you industries know you can, and geography industry and, and all that you can really kind of filter out and so obviously with 80,000 uh, plus openings you do need to filter out and so, like you said, one of the things you might want to look for is, uh, you know, se- you know, seasonal uh, or other summer jobs or whatever. So to separate that by, by those keywords. Uh, the other thing they can do is, uh, as Bob had kind of mentioned before, you can connect with your career services at, at school, guidance office at uh, high school. Mm-hmm. A lot of times uh, if somebody has an opening, they'll, they might post it with um, a guidance officer. Or if they have a, um, an internship or a volunteer opportunity, sure. they might. I know at that uh, at that meeting at Worcester State University, we had uh, there was a representative there from Imperial Distributors. Yeah, yeah, and she was saying, you know, they actually have a hard time filling some of their summer job uh, slots, and so, um, you know, it seems a little bit counterintuitive with all the you know the young people out there looking for for summer jobs. Um, they have some seasonal positions, so yeah. Um, the other, the other, some just some advice you can network. So I think if you act mm. actively, kind of network and talk with people, kind of make it well known that you're looking for a summer opportunity. Uh, you never know if you might be able to make a connection with somebody. Yeah, really talk it up, Bob. When you were younger, your in your tennis days, did you ever go to uh, summer camp, <laughs> tennis camp, or anything? No, none of this. Earlier was Treasure Valley. Oh, okay. You know, Treasure Valley was the place to go. That's the Boy Scout camp. Boy Scout camp. Yep. Sure. So, um, you know, but you've got a lot of summer camps out there. And if you've been, if, if you grew up going to a summer camp, you should be reaching out to them. Yep. 
uh, and and those organizations that run those programs to see, um, you know, right now you're probably on the tail end. You're probably a little bit too late, actually. Mm-hmm. That's why we did our summer jobs fair, uh, you know, about a month or so uh, previous to this. Uh, but but hey, you never know. Maybe someone backed out. Maybe there's a position open. Maybe they're they're starting a new program or opening up new, um, you know, with new enrollments. Maybe into their summer camps. So you want to really reach out and 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 spread the word there too. Network there. So. And uh, the final piece of advice I was given was uh, to do mock interviews in advance. So this kind of goes to what you were talking about earlier, Jeff, is you should be prepared because uh, a lot of times youth will go into a uh, an interview and they'll ask a question and they don't have any sort of answer. So a lot of times if you practice this stuff, you can kind of come up with your strengths and your weaknesses ahead of time. Okay, so... Um, it, and there's so many people out there looking, as as you know, it's a... Um, it's a, it's a Tina, I'm just giving word here to Dr. Weird. Communication here with our producer extraordinaire uh, that we're that it is about 12:45, so we're going to be coming up on another break. So he wanted to let me know that that we'll be breaking in a, in a minute after this segment. Yeah. But so yeah, so those summer jobs are, are just so important these days for that work readiness experience um, and for getting people there. And I should mention too, um, we coordinate uh, the funding for the YouthWorks summer job program that's state funded. And right now, you know, I want to thank our uh, uh, state uh, delegates. Um, the the representatives have been, you know, wonderful for that. State senators as well have, have offered their support. Right now we're looking at, um, you know, some potential cuts there to those right. programs. You know, you take that with the private sector also having a challenge in bringing on uh, summer employees. Uh, you know, it really adds up to, again, a continued another summer of very dismal uh, employment figures for young people. And right. so uh, if folks out there listening or, or, or watching, you know, have an interest in this, we would love to have them, you know, contact their, their state uh, senators and representatives and let them know uh, that, that summer jobs, you know, is an important program uh, and that, uh, you know, we'd like to see that, uh, y- you know, funded. So um, right now there's a supplemental budget request for mm-hmm. this year to hopefully augment this summer. And then uh, we're we're also working. They're they're also working hard on uh, the the FY14 budget statewide. So that line items is also a big one. So yeah. So hopefully next month we have some some good news as we hear more yeah, word about all, that. It's just I think the bottom line is it's very difficult to have a prepared and ready workforce if young people are not experienced in work. You can read about it. Mm-hmm. You can watch videos. You can talk about it with mentors. You can do all those other things. But being in a work environment is probably the number one thing you can do to prepare yourself for the work environment, right? Right. So, okay, Dr. Sikowski, I think we're going to take another quick break, and then we'll be back with... Hello, this is Bob Sikowski, and I'm inviting you to join me on Saturday and Sunday afternoons for Poker Party from 2 to 4, right here on WCUW Worcester. Okay, so uh, we're back, boy. That that uh, I've caught your show on the weekends, uh, Doctor Zakowski, Bob Zakowski. Uh, great uh, polka music, and not just traditional, straight up, uh, you know, polka. Well, well, how would you call it traditional polka? Is it? There's your traditional polka, so an alternative polka. Yeah. So the it's new the al- stuff. Yeah, the new stuff is uh, well, you know they actually a lot of cover of of very popular rock and roll songs and yep. others. So. Yeah, I listen to it, too. I actually get it in Douglas as well. So, Sean, we have a, a, an interview here that we're going to air. Did you want to introduce that at all? Or? Yeah, the, the business services representatives who all the career centers around the state have a staff member who will connect with businesses to kind of... It's their job to go out and, and yeah, talk can, to business. Yeah, and, and they'll post with, job openings. Yep. Um, so they, we've got the customer side, which is some of these workshops and everything, but we have also got the... Um, the business side as well. So they had a conference earlier, and they've um, they invited some employers and um, other BSRs to kind of network and talk about everything. So Jeff had a couple minutes to sit down with them, so we can go right to that. Okay, we're here with Ken Messina, the Rapid Response Business Service Engagement Manager for for Massachusetts. For Massachusetts. Ken, uh, can you tell us a little bit about today's event? Well, we're very happy to have this event today where we pulled together all of the different BSRs and folks that visit visit businesses every day. Um, I think it's crucial that we all talk, we all 
collaborate on all of our services. And what we're really trying to do here today is to pull all those services together so we have a consistency when we're going out and visiting businesses. I know there's a number of different uh, uh, agencies and programs represented. Can you speak a little bit about, about some of the variety of services that are available to businesses in the state? Sure. There's quite a few here today. Um, we're very happy to say that you know we have the Workforce Training Fund, uh, uh, entrepreneurial uh, services, entrepreneurial training programs that they have. We have the WorkShare program, which is a great program. It's an alternative for businesses that might be experiencing a downturn, that might think they have to lay people off. And with this particular program, you can actually set up a WorkShare account, and um, they would be able to keep their skilled workers down during a slow period. Um, we have the DIA grants uh, situation going on, or the DIA grants folks that are here as well, uh, $25,000 for wor workplace, workplace safety grants. Um, it's just been a great show, I think, so far, you know, with all the different programs that we have out there to help. Great, and I know that we also had some employers come in and speak. Yes, we did. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit about, uh, you know, some of the things that we've learned from their perspective? Sure. Uh, we had Blaisdell Insurance today. We also had, I think it was Red Barn Oven Roasters uh, Coffee here as well. I think um, the, the importance that we uh, heard from the employers basically was that we need to get out there, we need to embrace the employers, we need to make sure that they understand what we're doing, being honest what we do, get back to them in a timely fashion. Um, I think that we saw the benefits of all the services that we can offer them. There were some pretty good examples of how we connected with some of the different services that we had. Well, thank you for your time, and, and uh, it seems like uh, it's been a fascinating and very interesting uh, conference day. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, we're here with Dave Gadir, the Executive Director of CareerPoint, uh, one of the career centers in Massachusetts, and that's located in? Holyoke. In Holyoke, Mass. So, uh, and you're also one of the conference, the business service conference uh, uh, planners uh, and leaders today, right? Yeah, I'm one of the original people on the Merlot Committee, and I'm also on the Extended Business Employment uh, Engagement Committee. Yeah. So those are the two groups coming together. So Merlot, that's an acronym, Massachusetts Employer Relations? Employer Relations Learning Opportunity Team. <laughs> there we go. Excellent. Easier just to say hello, I yeah, guess. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so can you talk to us a little bit about today's event and, and the importance of bringing folks together? Well, there's a couple of things that come to my mind. Uh, one is uh, it, it's, it's one of the places where you can really start to break down the silos of how we do business engagement. Uh, we talk about breaking that down all the time, but it, it's not going to happen politically or fiscally. It's going to happen from the ground up. What I love about this conference and these two committees is these, these are really based on the frontline people that, that are the ones doing the direct service with the business community. So they're the ones that ultimately make it happen. Bringing them all together from all the different agencies really starts to kind of force feed that one customer, uh, one point of contact, that mentality. It's great to have them uh, have a basic awareness of all the different services that are out there. I know we've had uh, representatives from a number of different agencies sure. talk about the services. So, uh, so appreciate all the work that you're doing. And uh, I know you're going to get back into the conference. So <laughs> thanks, thanks for taking a couple minutes to speak oh, with us. My pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Okay. Well, we'll back. Uh, and and uh, <laughs> so that, that was a really neat event. Um, yeah. So you, you, you got to attend the event. And yeah. you have any any comments or? No, it's just it's just great to uh, to kind of connect with uh, have have those folks come together, you know, chat with business about what those what those needs are, uh, recognize and understand, you know, the different um, services that are out there and offer to business so that they can help connect those businesses with those services that are available. So, um, you know, we've often talked about uh, the changing workplace and what's you know employment trends and what's happening in the world with with work. And there's an interesting um, op-ed or uh, interesting article uh, by Thomas Friedman in the New York New Times. New York Times, yeah. Yeah, it's a couple weeks ago now. <coughs> it, was, it was, I think the title is, um, you know, the, the rise of the 401k world. or It's, it's, a, four it's a 401k world. Yep. Yeah, it's a 401k world. So 401k being uh, the retirement plan system that's, that's, you know, based around people basically stashing money aside for themselves yep. and planning for their own retirement may be matched to some extent by an employer contribution. So it's it's called um, a defined contribution plan style retirement system. You know, back, you go back 20, 30, 40 years ago, we were in the majority of jobs that had a retirement plan attached to it 
had what was more of a defined benefits plan, which was your standard, okay, you retire, you get a monthly allotment, a monthly check, Okay. Uh, you know, going forward in retirement. And so that benefit was defined. Right now, the, what's defined is your contribution. So much more... So Thomas Friedman kind of connects the rise of the 401k with other changes, other trends in society where more and more, you know, it's kind of framed, we need to take ownership of our own lives, yep. of our own careers, of our own, um, uh, you know, advancement, if you will, our, our own stability, our own safety, our own, you know. And we have the opportunity to do so with, you know, the rise of the internet and everything's at our fingertips now. Boy, it's funny you mention that because I read another article I was going to mention that I don't think you've seen, or maybe you have, judging by by that by that comment about how the internet. I think I think it's something to to the effect of um, how the internet um, destroyed the middle class, and it's a uh-huh. book that's that's come out, and so there's an article about the book, and you know it talks about um, you know a similar trend around how. Um, the author makes the point, well, if you look at Kodak, you know, in its heyday, it employed, you know, almost 150,000 people yeah. supporting um, photography and the, the processing of ph- photographs and, and everything. And now, you know, you look at, at the internet, internet-based digital photography world and you've got, like, small tech companies that support, like, digital photography, you know, whether it's, um, um, you know, not just the camera makers, but also you've got... Uh, like these websites, you know, like um, Instagram, Tumblr, Instagram, yeah. they employ like three people, four people. Yeah. So just the dissolution of those very stable middle class jobs um, due to the rise of technology and efficiencies and specifically the Internet and mm-hmm. the Internet based economy. So he kind of talks about how. So this author, uh, you know, t- not Thomas Friedman, but this other uh, author, you know, talks about how. Okay, I'm a YouTube um, artist, musician trying to make money off the YouTube. Y- you know, instead of signing with a traditional like record label. Yeah, you oh, have more, okay. yeah, yeah, you have more serious. freedom and yeah. everything. Yeah. But you you uh, have a very tough time making an actual living off of that. But I think the the, the flip side of that is, which he kind of talks about, which Friedman talks about, yeah. is that you have the ability to kind of self-educate. If there was something you wanted to learn about, it's at the tip of your fingers. You can pull out your phone and you can search sure. something really quick. You so I'm, I, so I, I, one, of the, one of the, I guess, it's a pretty controversial article. I think folks should read it for themselves. One thing I walked away not understanding, not knowing, is whether Tom Friedman...